Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Ha Rakakwadash Mama. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and the elders. Double honors to my elders as well. Aharawan Banyasha Allah of the Lions Day Camp here in Jacksonville, Florida. And salutations to the fellow Akim, Atwafim, and children Banyam that believe in truth and in sincerity. It's your brother, I thank you. Allah back to you another lesson. And Yahweh is edifying. It's just going into the folly of trusting in riches. As you can see, I want to start off in the book of Psalms, chapter 49 and verse 1. All right, the folly of trusting in riches, which Esau riches ain't riches at all. All right, it's real, real money ultimately is gold and silver. All right, in a matter of weight. But Esau created fiat currency, all right, paper dollar, which is not even real money. All right, but that what he has set up to what bamboozle, hoodwink, and confuse our people and lead them astray all right as sheep being led to the slaughter okay so this is the book of psalms chapter 49 and verse 1 to the chief musician a psalm of the sons of korah hear this all ye people give ear all ye inhabitants of the world right all the inhabitants of the world the sea of people all right give ear both low and high rich and poor together right and all both low and high rich and poor together is going to be on the same playing field soon all right, as they're trying to put forth what the MOTB. All right, as today, um, actually today, the Jacob Rothschild individual, a financier, they're calling him. Um, as the uh, the news is going out, he was um, he died. All right, the Lord took his spirit. All right, at 87 years old, as he is a part of and symbol, and he's a part of and a symbol of what the central banks, the central banking families. All right. One of the unclean spirits that came out of the mouth like frogs pertaining to Revelation 16, 13. All right. The banking system. All right. That being said, just real quick is Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. Just get to the point. And he calls of all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that's what it's ultimately coming down to. All right. A new world order, a fourth industrial revolution, a global reset. All right. As the World Economic Forum. All right. These summit meetings, these I-9 summit meetings as they're globally trying to enter into a new age. All right. Especially when it comes to the monetary system, the money. All right. The currency. All right. So that was a sim symbol symbolism. All right. Also a, a warning and a wake up call from the Heavenly Father. All right. Just being a point. But just going back to the book of Psalms, chapter 49. All right. And how what we all go be on that same plan field together because this is what it's leading to. All right. It's leading to prophecy. Verse two, both low and high, rich and poor together. Right. My mouth shall speak of wisdom. And the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Right. When all manner of, of uh, uh, manner of these things are, are coming to pass. All right. Roughly paraphrasing. All right. All manner of um, the things that are at hand. All right. What what conversations you ought to be. All right. What, what conversations you ought to be in, you know, and that's what pertaining to prophecy, the Lord's will, what he's coming to do. You should know the spiritual weather just as you know the weather from day to day. All right. Verse four, I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. Wherefore should I fear it in the days of evil when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? That's a question. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Right. You know, and that's what you have people do here today. The wicked. All right. You know, um, two thirds of our people as they're again bamboozled. And hoodwink to what riches truly is. Riches come within knowing of the Lord. All right. If you're going to glory in anything, glory in the heavenly father, glory in his riches, which is this truth. All right. Which ultimately is going to establish true equity. All right. Discretion. Wisdom. All right. Sophia. 
So what they that trust in their wealth, right, their fleshly wealth, their fleshly riches, and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, that's ultimately going to be a, a, what, an a evidence against them. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, right? You can't buy your way out of slavery. With the, uh, with the currency and the dollar with their faces on it. Nor give to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai ransom for him, right? You know, that's why the scriptures even go into how um, you're going to be, uh, you, you sold yourself for not, but ye shall be redeemed without money, all right? By the great hand of the Heavenly Father, man, the great power uh, out of Shadja, all right? That demon like power by way of his son, Yahweh Shai, and Michael, meaning God like power, right? And the host of angels, man, host meaning armies, all right? When he come and enter in his house of the thief, man, this devil go get his judgment, all right? And two-thirds of our people ultimately going to get the judgment right along with him. Because in the book of Proverbs, it states what? Thou join hand in hand, the wicked is not going unpunished, all right? And how is our people joining hand in hand with this devil, all right? Two-thirds of our people, that is, all right? They're, they're joining hand in hand by way of his system, by way of his money, all right? His doctrine, his demonocracy, the rat race. That he set up for our people. All right. Again, the money is not evil and wicked. But the lust of it. All right. The lust of that money. And our people lust after that money. Okay. So I'm going to start from five from the, and read down from the top again so it can be more clear. Wherefore, wherefore should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my hill shall come past me about? Right, because he's ultimately prepared himself, all right, and as we're doing, all right, those uh, who listening and learning, all right, being of the hopefully let, all right, we're preparing ourselves by inclining our ear to hear, all right, um, the wisdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, increasing our learning. Rightly dividing the word of truth, all right, through uh, studying to show ourselves approved, all right, again, um, rehearsing the righteous acts, getting out there week in and week out, putting our body as a living sacrifice ultimately, and doing these epistles, these lessons and letters, all right, throughout the week to um, keep a stay sharp, all right, and ultimately increase in that learning as we're ever learning, all right, until those new bodies, man. And that, and that, and until we uh, passed up under the rod, all right, we're made perfect, having the law in our, in our, in our inward parts, all right. But six again, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God, right, a ransom for him, for the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceaseth forever. That he should still live forever and not see corruption. All right. For he seeth that wise men die. Likewise, the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inward thought is that the houses shall continue forever in their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Right. And that's where that pride and that greed come in at. All right. And Esau works in that manner. All right, that's what he's going to lead to what Revelation 12 and 12. He knows he have but a short time. That's how the wicked acts as if they don't have. This is their end all be all pertaining to this kingdom, this life, when this is not even life at all. All right. That being said, I want to jump to wisdom of Solomon. Chapter two. Because this is their thoughts pertaining to the wicked, all right? And two-thirds of our people that join hand-in-hand hand with the wicked, they have this same, like, mindset, all right? To where what? They try to live it up here and get rich as they can, all right? Um, whether they self-proclaim themselves to be self-made or uh, a hustler, whatever the case may be, all right? They try to um, gain on this side, all right? But the gain on this side is actually going to be an evidence against you of not knowing the heavenly father. All right. Now what you have some people that are rich, but their heart are, their heart is good towards the heavenly father. As the scriptures say, whether you be rich or poor, as long as you have a, 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 a good heart towards the heavenly father, man. So your mind ultimately has to be on the Lord. 
All right. You have to know the Lord, know the heavenly father, know his name, call upon his name. All right. Learn of him. All right. As the scriptures say in Psalms 2 and 11, kiss the son, lest he be angry or ye perish from the way. All right, but this the wicked, man, that wicked thought, just as we brought out in Psalms uh, 49, all right? And this is um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright, a life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy, right? They just think that man's just dying and, and just disintegrating to the ground, and that's just the end-all, be-all. So they try to what uh, get rich and live it up and be in a boastful manner. All right. Be a king, be a lord on this side. Right. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. All right. And that's a wicked thought. All right. Because if you know of the heavenly father, and his only begotten son. All right. He raised up his son, our big brother, Yahweh Shai. All right. From the grave. And that's what we hoping for. All right. Not to be. Um. You know, those those who are of the elect that perished, we to meet them up in the air, all right, but not to meet death, all right, as we're in the grave already, we're in a hellish condition already, all right, we need to be exiled already, all right, we're the people that need to be saved, for we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been, for the breath in our nostrils is as smoke. And a little spark in the moving of our heart. Which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes. Right. Basically, when that spark get put out, that spirit get put out. All right. Or severed from the body. All right. Our body will be what? To turn into the ground that it came. All right. It will go back into the dust, the ashes. All right. To the elements as this flesh is made of. And our spirit shall vanish as the soft air is ultimately is going to vanish back unto the heavenly father. All right. And travel back into the. To your hey, to, to get your judgment. All right. Ultimately of what you've done in that body, you know, towards the heavenly father, towards righteousness and what you've done as far as wickedness, man. If you're repentant of it. All right. If you know of your how about Shimmy, how was If you have any. If you have an account in the heavens, man, all right, that's what the book of um, Matthew, because the true riches is in heaven, all right? What we do here through the spirit is ultimately being tallied up and accounted for in the in the Shemimes, man. This is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal, right? Like Esau, he can take it. Wipe your bank account clean. Garnish your wages. Do whatever you want to do with you because this is his kingdom, right? It's his heaven. And our people just slaves to this kingdom, man. Every kingdom needs slaves, all right? But two-thirds of our people, they, they don't understand that they're slaves, man. Harriet Tubman said it. All right, she would have freed thousands, thousands of more slaves if they would have knew they were slaves somewhere along that term. All right, what well, two-thirds of our people suffer Stockholm Syndrome. They have built, built a relationship with their enemy to where they're comfortable with jobs, all right, 401ks. They think they have a fair share of equity in Esau's system, all right, but they don't. All right, Esau just keep moving the margin more and more. So what? Lay not up yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal, right? You can't steal nothing from up there, all right? Everything in its proper order and its, and its righteousness, all right? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There will your mind be also. So when your mind is on the fleshly riches, the world, which is all falsified and it's a rat race to begin with to bamboozle and confuse our people. All right. You're going to get caught up in that. Again, sheep being led to the slaughter. You think of that terminology of sheep being led to the slaughter. Sheep are a very uh, delicate animal. Um, 
to where you can get it to do pretty much whatever you want it to do. All right. To where it's, you can lead it to its death and it's very well going to get, it's going to go. All right. Or um, how they do the cows on, in, in farming. All right. Uh, it'll be a dark tunnel and the only uh, light will be the little hole where they head. They're going to stick their head out. All right. And then the blade come and chop. All right. They caught off guard. All right. The sheep being led to the slaughter. So just back in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 4, this is what the wicked say. And this is why they live in that manner. And two-thirds of our people have the mindset as Esau, all right? And they live in the same, like, manner, all right, to where they try to live it up here, all right? And you see that they go, they lose their wits for, 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 for the system, all right? And what the system upholds, what it have, women, so on and so forth, man. All right, because what they say, the money, money bring, money bring the uh, the cars, the clothes, the holes, right? It also bring more problems, right? More wickedness, more more iniquity. But this is the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter two and verse four. And our name shall be forgotten in time, right? They want their name to be uh, something with, uh, of of importance. To where they not even reverencing or have their mind on Yahweh Shah. All right, the man who actually crucified was crucified and laid him his life down for them to where they can so called live it up today. Do as thou wilt, to where they're crucifying the Lord afresh daily in doing so. And no man shall have our works in remembrance, right? Because it's not supposed to be in remembrance. It's all supposed to be the work of the Lord and what he done. All right, and the prophets. And our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof. Like it's going to um, evaporate. <laughs> For a time, is a, that, yeah, that was pretty much what it was explaining, evaporation. Verse 5, For our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning. For it is fast sealed so that no man cometh again. Right, but it's reincarnation in the scriptures. You know, the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. Again, just the the, uh, the mindset of the wicked to where the Lord has them in derision. All right. He has the world in their hearts, as you can clearly see and read. Verse six, come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. And let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Right. And that's why they use, make usury of people for their sake, because they they think small. <laughs> they think that this is this is the life that you live. And if you don't get it now, you won't ever get it. Well, guess what? You know, you're going to be born later in the kingdom if you don't repent now. All right. And you're going to know that you erred. All right. The, the later the later you are born in the kingdom, you go know that you was a wicked ass motherfucker. You was a wicked individual, man. All right. You'll know that you was a uh, wisdom of Solomon, chapter two. You was in this mindset. You know, let us live. The, the, the righteous, is, the righteous is not for our turn. In other words. Verse 7, let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Like as if it's not going to be a season for it to uh, bud again. All right. And that's why what we took uh, those who are in this truth of the Lord's sheepfold calling upon the true and rightful names of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Why Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls God and JC, letting the people know that the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Simno Indians are the Israelites of the speck uh, uh, are the Israelites of the Bible, as well as the speckled bird, because we are not all gonna be black or look like a uh, Jim Kelly, right? But we're gonna have uh people of our nation that look like the other nations, man. You know, those who are Worshiping in spirit and truth. We know that what? It's a time for us to be back in our righteous steed again. All right. We had to go through the streets. We had to love not our lives. As the scriptures say, you know, with the hopes that we will receive the, a reward in doing so. All right. As the scriptures say. 
He's not going to forget our labor of love, man. Yes, Revelation 3. 3. Revelation 3 and 10. All right, let me just get that right quick. It's lucky. This is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Again, the mark of the beast. All right, Revelation 13, 16, what we pretty much brought out earlier in the beginning of the scripture is just the spirit, right? And that's what hey, that's the that's the Lord's test, you know. Once that is being made mandatory and established amongst the earth, all right, especially mainly here in, in, in America, all right, in Babylon, the Great and Second Egypt, all right, we only got an ample amount of time left for the Lord to send his son, Yahweh Shah, and host the angels to crack the sky, man, to send judgment as well as salvation for those who deserve it, all right, those who hoping on it, longing for it. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown and that's how important this truth is man that you don't want nobody to take it from you trick you off your square no matter how much they poke you in the side they did the same thing to you how shy all right there's no servant greater than his master all right, we got to stand on what we have learned and what we believe and found out to be true. No matter how uh, strong the illusion is on our people and it's more of them, it may seem like it's more of them than us, but it's more of us than it is that be with them, man. I believe that was Elisha or Elijah against the false prophets of Baal. All right, we're in that same type environment today. Even when it comes to our own people, all right? But again, no servant is greater than his master. The Lord came unto his own, and his own knew him not, all right? So we got to continue to tear down these sicknesses. Well, diagnose our people, all right? Understand the sicknesses and try to tear down these strongholds to the best of our ability to hope to save some of them. So this is back in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 9. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place for this is our portion and our lot is this right and this is straight folly <laughs> and everything that's here is created by man like oh let me create this or build this and it's ultimately made of elements just as the body so it can disintegrate and go right back to the dust ground zero as Solomon and Gomorrah went back to the dust as it's soot still today all right that's ultimately what this place is going to be. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Man, that's what it's due here. There's no order. The order is the money. All right. Um, do, do as thou wilt. You know, the dog eat dog world type of spirit. Um, every man for himself. You know, the, the wicked system that's in place all right full of greed the rat race remember the bishop did a lesson on the rat race all right the greed and hypocrisy and the oppression against the the lord's people the apple of his eye all right of how we were called minorities and and, and three-fifths of a man in the constitution so on and so forth all right they didn't pity the old nor the young when it came to slavery rape robbing and rape robbing and murdering they ain't pity that Verse 11, let our strength be the law of justice for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth, right? You know, they cast the feeble to the wayside instead of um, trying to help and up, up, help them and, and build them up. And that's ultimately what's going to um, transpire when they make those demands and, de and declarations on the MOTB, all right, and the, the C hit, all right. You know you're gonna be um, pretty much booted out of society for 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 not being a partakers of it. He's gonna call all both small and small and small and great, rich and poor, to receive that mark, all right. 
It's Revelation 13, 16, because I don't think we finished it. And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right. You're not going to be able to buy or sell, say he that have it, <laughs> you know, to see who, the one who set it up, man, because this is what fourth industrial revolution. This is a global reset. All right. He's resetting the people into a more into a slavery again. All right. You went into hardcore slavery with the yokes of iron on your neck until he destroyed you, according to Deuteronomy 28. Lucky, let's get it. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28. And 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Alright. That was a physical yoke. Until he have destroyed thee. Right, so he had destroyed thee, all right? And he destroyed us by what? Taking away the names of the Heavenly Father, all right? You saw that on the movie Roots as he beat the man to death until he changed, until he said the name uh, Toby, all right? He was, he, was, he was standing on his Hebrew name, man, even almost to death, even to where his own people was looking at him like, man, just say Toby, man. And he was like, my, he was like, my name, Kunta. You know, down and beat his spine out of his back. You know, whip the spine out of his back until he said it in front of his people. All right, a form of back back breaking. All right, that's what's that's how he destroyed our people. All right, to where what our people don't even want to know the truth now today. All right, they whether uh sit comfortable in the lie they was told. All right, because ultimately is is it's a responsibility that come with knowing the truth. All right, learning of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, you got to cut off the folly, the things that Esau has tricked our people into being a part of. All right, the wickedness, the homosexuality, all right, the um, whoremongering, the adultery, right? Ultimately, just the folly, man. Women scattering abroad, thinking they can do and usurp authority at home over their men. All right, just all out of order. So he destroyed thee, and even more so to where he's coming with a pair of balances in his hand in these times to try to put the people in more of a slavery than they already was, all right? Because what, it went from a physical yoke to an illusion yoke, all right, of giving you jobs. Oh, you get paid this an hour and that an hour, the emancipation approxim approximation. I always say that wrong. It's a tongue twister for me, Salakia. But given jobs was also another form of slavery. It was the sleep form of slavery to where Esau is to rock our people to sleep. But it's all by the will of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, of those who he don't want. All right. To those who he's going to be, um, what, the multitude that's going to perish, that were born in vain. Roughly paraphrasing. point is, is returning back to the Heavenly Father and spirit and the truth, calling upon the rightful names before the dreadful day of the Lord comes. All right, as we're in the midst of Jacob's trouble, it's only going to enheighten. And it's only going to get worse. All right, it's going to get worse before we get out of here. But that's what we're hoping for. All right, as we're seeing it getting worse, and that's why we rejoice more and more as time go on, man. And the wicked just sitting there looking like, we, we the problem. What you happy for? You got to live here, too, because you're in a wicked state of mind being two-thirds of our people. You're in the mindset of the heathen, thinking they that thinking that you're like them and we're not, all right? Two thirds of our people, not those who are listening and learning, you know, it's more so. But y'all understand what I'm saying. This is Jeremiah chapter nine and verse twenty-three. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any and can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do I do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? So 
lot. I mean, but that was even a good one. I wanted Jeremiah 9. I'm thinking I'm reading Jeremiah 9 and 23. That was Jeremiah chapter 23. But that was even a good uh, precept. But this is Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Shai, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Right, your physical might, your physical strength. You can look like Debo, don't glory in that. You can have a mighty bank account, don't glory in that. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, right? Don't glory in your riches. But let him that glory of glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, right? That's the point. Because if you don't, you broke. You broke. And, and the longer you wait to know of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and learn of him, the more broker you're going to be. All right. The more the 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 a hey, you're not gonna be able to create equity, man, until you learn of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Till you know of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and get some form of understanding what he's coming to do, the creator of the whole earth and you. What could it say? What could a clay say to the potter? That I am the Lord which exercise love and kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. All right? and as well as the Lord bringing judgment, he's bringing what? Salvation for those who, who's, who's um, waiting on his mercy. All right, hoping on his mercy and, 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 and waiting on his, uh, his salvation. All right, but the main point is what? Glory in the Lord, man. If you're going to glory in anything, you want to glory in the Lord, not glory in how you understand Esau's system. We don't care about that. We understand Esau's system from the front and back by understanding his truth and how his system was even set up to begin with and how it's falsified. We see through Esau's system. This Proverbs 1 and 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, Yahweh that was reincarnation because who Solomon is Yahweh Shai. To know wisdom, the first Adam. And instruction to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. All right. That's what this truth comes with. All right. Everything you need, man, from the eye to the thigh, all right? That's why it's just to trump everything and make it easier for, 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 for yourself, all right? Just man in general, just repent, all right? Return back to the Heavenly Father, man. Watch a video or two, you know? Watch spiritual hydrations. Watch the short ones. Put it in front of your family members that, you know, have short attention span, let them watch a video, a short one or two, spiritual hydrations, get their feet wet, plant a seed, all right? A man plant a seed, another man may water, but ultimately the most high give the increase, all right? Prayer as well, man, prayer for um, certain individuals who you may want the Lord to uh, bestow his spirit upon, all right? But just to get some words here, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity, going into the term equity, it says evenness. May Strong's age, 4339. May Shar. May Shar. May All right. Evenness, uprightness, straightness, equity. Evenness, level, smoothness, uprightness, rightly. All right. So again, rightly dividing the word of truth, being upright. All right. Meaning righteous. You know, this is what we're coming into. This is the perfection that we're yearning for and we're being molded to. All right. That fine gold by what? Learning of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Storing our riches up in heaven. All right. Starting with the milk of scriptures. Starting with the curses, the promises. All right. Definitely some of that history. You know, but only fools despise wisdom and knowledge. All right. And think and hold on to the one who smoked them. Stay on the one. Stay up. Stay on the one who smoked them. Only fools going to do that and deny the true knowledge, the true wisdom. 
All right. So it's back in Proverbs 1 and 3 from the top again to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Right. You will attain unto wise counsel if you got some form of understanding. All right. And honesty and uprightness about you. You're gonna you're gonna attain until until wise counsel, the counsel of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. To understand a proverb and to interpretation and the interpretation, Salaki, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction, right? And have no fear. Alright, so only fools uh, despise the wisdom. You know, only those with Stockholm Syndrome and those who are still sick. Again, Harriet Tubman made a, a, a profound statement, all right, allegedly, on how she would have freed a thousand more slaves if they would have they were slaves. Again, our people suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. All right, think of uh, if Moses was uh, suffering of Stockholm Syndrome, the Lord wouldn't have been able to use him under the, just being right up under the, hands of pharaoh the lord wouldn't have been able to use him man if he had stockholm syndrome you know if the spirit wasn't upon him to be uh, somewhat of an uncle tom it's good to be an uncle tom because uncle tom would have been uh uncle tom in the back end he look out for his people all right he might take out the leftovers a lookout and tell you a conversation that might went on pertaining to your judgment uh, uh the field nigga out there he might he might give you some insight what you can do to uh, beat it, so on and so forth. Man. But 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 Sambo, on the other hand, Sambo is uh, a court justice. He's Stephen of Django. All right. If, if if Moses, King Masha, all right, Moses was in that mindset of of, of a Sambo. All right, we never got out of the first Egypt. Man. The Lord had to do something different. All right, but he wasn't, man. You know, he was. Uh, Yeah, he, 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 he ultimately was, he was bound to the Heavenly Father, man, as our people were supposed to be. All right, but again, two-thirds of our people are not bound to the Heavenly Father, man. You know, they lack fear and don't want to know of his wisdom and knowledge and his, you know, his understanding, what, what is, what's his will. All right, so ultimately they're what? Choosing death. So which one are you? Are you the wicked that says what? The righteous is not for our turn. Let's live it up here today. Or you are a spiritual being that's seeking out your welfare, your spiritual welfare, and going to make haste to the Heavenly Father before destruction comes. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 3. Because if you stay on the one that smote you, you're ultimately choosing death. All right. If you love the rat race more than you love Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai and wanting to repent, and be righteous, be renewed, be quickened, kaya, right? With a new body, a new heart. You're choosing death. This is Jeremiah 8 and 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places where I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts, right? The Lord of armies, right? All right, again. Death go be chosen rather than life. It's the Lord set up on how two thirds of our people are caught up in the rat race. They love money than they love God. All right. And the money that they run after is not even real money. All right. So again, they sold they suffer not, and yet they go be redeemed without money. Shalom, Papa Thai, and DTA. Yahar Ratazad is lesson is edifying. Shalom, Papa Thai, and DTA. Until the next one.